excited. Isn't God good? Don't you just love him this morning? Hallelujah. He's so good. He's so faithful to all of us in here today. And so, uh, man, listen, I'm excited about today. Um, I'm excited about this series, Don't Quit in the Dip. Don't quit in the dip. And uh, so if you don't care, go ahead and look at your neighbor six feet apart, whatever, elbow bump or whatever you got to do. But say these words, don't quit in the dip. Now the rest of you say, don't quit in the dip. Here's ready. You ready for this one? Because God's doing something in you. Look, look, don't y'all stop. Look at him again. Because some, some of you are like, don't quit in the dip. I mean, man, you, yeah, y'all acting like, never mind. But, but look at him again and say, because God's doing something in you. Yeah, tell somebody, God's doing something in you. God is, how many of y'all believe God's doing something at Elkhorn Baptist Church? Come on, that's five of you. How many of y'all believe that the Holy Ghost is doing something here at this church? He's reaching people, amen? He's reaching people. I love you guys. Man, I love preaching here. I love, I love preaching the Word of God here. Because, man, I think you guys get it. Yeah, I love you guys, man. I really, really do. Love you so much. And thank you all for being here. How many of you know church is essential? Church is essential. Yeah, it sure is essential. And I also want to thank all those watching by Facebook. Think about all these avenues that God has blessed Elkhorn with to reach people. Facebook, website, YouTube, church app. And even right now, as I'm preaching, we're at the Taylor Kane Detention Center, and they're in a, a bunch of roll of chairs, a big screen up there, and they're watching us here today. So, man, Taylor Kane Detention Center, and all you watching on Facebook, thank y'all. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're reaching people. It's going to be a little bit different today, and I don't apologize for that, because i got to preach it the way God downloaded it in my heart. Is that okay with everybody? I just got to deliver the way God put it in my heart. So, if y'all ready, I'm ready. Are y'all ready? Turn over and say, get ready, get ready. That's T.D. Jakes right there, by the way. Get ready, get ready. So I want to preach part two in the series that we're calling Pursue God, Pursue God, Don't Quit in the Dip. Don't quit Brendan Wheatley. My man's on the front row this morning. Amen. I see you, man. Yeah, there he is right there. That's the man right there. I love you, Brendan. You know I'm going to holler at you. Amen. That's good. That's good. So listen, uh, I, I seen him. I had, I, listen, how, how many of you know it's important? It's okay. I know it's time to preach. But it's important to let people know, man, you love them. And man, you appreciate them being at church. And listen, some of y'all don't realize this. this. This young man cried. Cried to be here. Today's his first day back at Elkhorn Baptist Church. And he is fired up with his mask on. With his mask on. Isn't that good? Barry and Sue in. Thank y'all. I don't even know where y'all are at. But man, thank y'all. I love you so much. And so, y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's preach a little bit. All right? So, I was, I was studying the Bible. How many of you know it's important to study your Bible? It's, it's so important. And I've seen something in Scripture that, man, I've really never, ever really paid that much attention to. You say, Brian, that's bad. How many of you know you can read the same verse 15 times and get 15 different messages out of it? That's called the anointing. That's the, that's the power of God in His Word. So... Today, in Exodus chapter 27, now, you don't have to turn there. You can go home and study it. But really, it's actually from Exodus chapter 26 to Exodus chapter 29. But we're going to hone in on chapter 27. And if you, I just want to give you the highlights of this chapter really, really quick. Exodus chapter 27, can I teach before I preach? Because I think it's important to do both. Exodus chapter 27 talks about the temple. Everybody say the temple. temple. Not the tower. The tower was built by, by man's hands. The temple, the Holy Ghost lives inside the temple, us. He lives in us. He lives in us, all right? And, and the temple had three parts to it. Now, if you're taking notes, take notes of this, because this is really good, a good Bible study. It had the outer courts. Everybody say the outer courts. All right, the rest of you say the inner courts. <laughs> and all of you say the holy of holies. It had the outer, the inner, and the holy of holies. The outer, the inner, and the holy of holies. And so, but when you got to the inner courts, I'm talking about the inner courts, the inner courts, the inner courts. It had three things inside the inner court that, that you need to pay attention to that we miss this all the time. Number one, it had the, the, the altar of incense. Everybody say the altar of incense. I'm, I'll get to preach in just a minute. But some of you, if all you come for is a shout, you're going to miss it. I got to teach. The altar of incense. Number two, it had the table of showbread. This is so good. 
And the third thing the inner court had inside of it was called the menorah. Everybody say the menorah. You're not speaking in tongues. It's just the menorah. It's just the menorah. Now listen to me. The menorah in Hebrew was called the lamp of God. Everybody say the lamp of God. Come on, hang with me. Because this is Satan's going to try to distract somebody here today not to get this word. So you got to lean in. you got to give God your attention. If somebody's distracting you, say, hold on, neighbor. I'll talk to you after church. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk to you after church. But the menorah in the Greek, in the Hebrew, I'm sorry, the Hebrew was called the lamp of God. Now, let's go NT, New Testament. In New Testament, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22, Matthew 6, 22, our bodies are the lamp of God. Our bodies, whether you like it or not, the, the Bible says your body is the lamp of God. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Listen, our bodies are the lamp of God. So listen, I want you to go ahead. I want you to help, help me testify this. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, you're the lamp of God. Come on, tell somebody, you're the lamp of God. Yeah, now watch this. Tell them this. And you're holding his oil. Yeah, come on, somebody. And you're holding his oil. We're going to get to this. We're going to, now, now let's get to some preaching. So the, the menorah I'm talking about would burn day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day. It would, be, it would burn night every day. Listen to me. Every day the high priest would have to go to the temple and light it. See, some of you are waiting for Sunday to be lit. Some of you, you're here today and you're saying, well, what in the world's going on? I'm telling you, you ought to recognize the fire from heaven. You ought to understand that there's something special about this church. If it was not for the Holy Ghost, none of us would be sitting here right now anyhow. But here's what you can't wait every Sunday to be lit. He had to go to the temple, the tabernacle, every day. Every day. Every day. Aaron had to go to the temple and he had to light the menorah. Had to be lit every day. But listen, here's, here's what I found out in the Bible. There was something, Jimmy, in the temple that was uncommon. This is so good. It looked different. And I guarantee some of you have never seen this because I'm telling you, I've seen it, but I didn't really pay it much attention to it. It, it. it didn't belong there. It didn't belong there. As a matter of fact, a lot of religious people would say, get it out. It shouldn't be in the room. <laughs> Yet it was there. I'm going to give you this today. This is so good. What was it? Y'all know what it was? It was a nasty, dirty, worn out, filthy rag. Did y'all hear me? It was a nasty, worn out, dirty, filthy rag. See, the only way the wick, the wick on the, on, on, in the lampstand was made out of a dirty, nasty, filthy rag. And also in that temple was dirty rags, a pile of dirty rags, a pile of dirty rags, a bunch of dirty rags. And the only way the wick could be lit, they had to go over to the pile of dirty rags. Read your Bible. They would get a dirty rag and they would light the wick from a dirty rag. So the dirty rag was dirty. The wick was dirty, but the oil was still in the lamp. I'm having So see, a lot of us here today, you say, well, Brian, I'm too nasty. I'm too dirty. I've got things in my life that should not be in my life. I've got some good news for you today. Oh, I want you to get this word in you today. Because some of you are paying more attention to the dirty wick than you are the oil in the lamp. Listen to me. I'm I love this because the Bible says, the Bible says, it don't matter what I say. It don't matter what you say. But the Bible says, everybody says the Bible says this. Yeah, everybody say, thus saith the Lord. Watch what it says, Isaiah 64, 6. I want this to get in your spirit. Why did they say this? Here's why. Listen to me, lean in so good. I hope y'all get it the way God gave it to me. All unrighteousness, all our unrighteousness are like. I'm doing a good Bible study. Y'all just sitting there looking at me. It's all right though. All. Huh. Oh, I know you think you're pretty. I know you think you all that in a bag of chips too. I know everybody says, well, my sin's no less. I'm to the Bible says, if you say you have no sin, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. 
First John chapter 1, y'all theologians. All of us. I don't care how pretty you look. I'm telling you, everybody in this house right now, Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners. Paul did. Paul said that. Peter, man, y'all don't want me to get on the apostle Peter. Abraham, he's a liar. Noah was a drunk. Are y'all okay? Yeah. <laughs> Rahab was a prostitute. But that's the bloodline of Jesus. What I'm trying to preach to churches today is this. We're paying more attention to the dirty stuff than we are the real stuff that's in our life. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Listen to me. The Lord spoke this into me. I, I truly believe with all of my, my heart. God says, I'm trying to find some dirty, filthy, nasty rags and soak them in my oil, the presence of God, and set them on fire. I believe that with all my heart this morning. Let me preach on that just a little bit. Y'all ready? Thursday, Thursday afternoon, I wrote this in my notes because when God speaks to me, it's important. It's better than E.F. Hutton. When God does, I'm saying this out loud, Facebook, to all of you today, I'm telling you, uh, thus says the Lord, Thursday afternoon at 2.43 p.m. And this is exactly what the Lord spoke in. He said, Brian, he don't speak. Maybe not to you. Maybe you don't know him. But I know my father who art in heaven. I'm one of his sheep. I still listen to his voice. He's, he talks. My sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. My children know their daddy's voice. My, my baby girl can be in a crowd of a hundred and I can say, Dee Dee! And she'll know that's her daddy calling out for her. I'm asking you this morning, will I? <laughs> Jeff Munsey! He's calling your name! Woo! Can y'all hear him? Yeah. Boy, y'all looking at me. Well, Brian, I thought he had spiritual laryngitis. <laughs> He's got a voice. He still speaks. Those who have an ear, let them hear what the Lord is saying. What is God saying to you right now? Here's what God told me. He says, here's the, the next revival, the next great awakening, the next upper room, listen to me, will not come from pastors, prophets, preachers, teachers, and evangelists. But thus saith the Lord, and I wrote this down, I'm going to stick close to my notes. But the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to find a bunch of filthy rags that are to be willing to be soaked in the presence of God. And I'm going to set them on fire. And I'm going to, I'm going to change this world. I don't care. I'm telling y'all, give God a praise here today. God's looking for some filthy rags. Yo, yo, hallelujah. Y'all are looking toward a man. And God says, I'll use a filthy rag if I can find them. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. God's not, God, why? <laughs> Settle down, preacher. Well, when you feel it, you just feel it. God's not looking for another preacher. He's looking for some twisted, dirty, nasty, filthy rags to be soaked in his oil and be willing to be set on fire. There's the, there's the question. You know you're dirty, but do you want to be set on fire for God? There's the question. Y'all hear me? There's the question. I get so tired. Of people judging other people because they want the fire and they don't. <laughs> oh, it's going to get oily in here today. Uh, yeah, hallelujah. God is looking for some twisted, dirty rags to be... To be soaked into his presence. Everybody, I know we looked at the temple all along. Well, why, why is the menorah there? I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you know what God says, Brian, I want to use you. But we're so, we're, we got our PhDs in telling God why he shouldn't use us. And God is sitting there this morning saying, I burnt the rags. I burnt your sin. I put my son on the cross and you telling me his blood is not good enough to forgive you and to cleanse you and to straighten you up and to set you on fire. Mm. I just want somebody today. To testify 
and say, I used to be a dirty rag. I used to be twisted, undone, messed up, no good for nothing. But God soaked me in his presence and now God set me on fire and I can't get over it. How many dirty rags am I looking at today? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think y'all are getting this. I think y'all are getting this, man. Don't look at the dirty rags. Look at the fire. Oil in the Bible, it equals, it represents. Anytime you see oil, 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 it represents the Holy Spirit. Well, check it out. Some of y'all are theologians about debating the Bible. Why don't you just surrender? Just surrender. Just surrender. Quit debating it and say, God, I may not understand it, <laughs> but I believe it. And I'm surrendering to it, God. I'm surrendering to it. Listen to me. I, I, I don't want three songs and take up an offering and a 20-minute sermon and go home dead and dry and undone. Hallelujah. Busted and disgusted. No, 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 no. I want some oil in the church. I want some oil in my life. I want some fire in your life. I want us all in here today to say, you know what? Lord, catch me on fire. Put the oil of God in my life. God, I want to burn for you. I don't want to be an average old Christian. Any, watch, anybody can be average. I'm looking for some water walkers. I'm looking for a Daniel in the lion's den. Oh, God, use me. <laughs> you ain't even got a wick. I'm telling y'all. And listen, let me go ahead and squash this lie. Because here's a lie I hear all the time from Christians. Where people just say I'm better. They think I'm better than them. No. I just got something in me that they don't. Help them. Help them. Don't look down on them. Help them. Teach them. Train them. Disciple them. Help these precious people. Can y'all imagine if all of us get caught on fire today? There ain't enough fire trucks up in hoo-hoo, Camelsville. I'm telling y'all. And I believe, and thus saith the Lord, I, drew, I agree with Dr. Henry Blackaby that a revival is going to happen, it's going to happen in South Central. And I believe God can use Elkhorn Baptist Church to start the fire. I'm just looking for a bunch of matches, hallelujah, that are willing to be set on fire. Woo! Settle down. No, settle up. Hallelujah. I want to see people who were nasty. Who were nasty. You talk about, listen, I love new Christians. They don't know no better. They ain't been in church very long, Mark. They just get saved and they're like, man, I like this. They, they, they don't get all sophisticated and all, all indoctrinated. I'm going some more. God's preaching good today. They ain't got time to sit back and go to a business meeting where everybody's mad at each other. They just say, God, I like this stuff. Lord, I felt some oil in me today. And God, catch me on fire. Don't ever let me look to the right or to the left, God. Use me for your glory. Come on, somebody, give God a glory clap. Amen? Give God a glory clap. Hallelujah. I, I just don't want a little oily children's group. I just don't want a little flicker here and a little flicker there for the youth group. I want my daughter to be caught on fire, Holy Ghost, Spirit filled, walking on water, tongue talking. That's what I want. That's what I'm praying for. Matter of fact, she already got it. And some of y'all, we just, is it real? I ain't talking to you. It's real. Yes, it's real. It's real. God has blessed me with the opportunity to, uh, to teach preachers. God has given me a platform now in my life. Now when I was, I answered my call when I was 25. I'm going to return 5 old, y'all. I'm a half a century. <laughs> I feel it too every once in a while. But God has blessed me after 25 years of ministry, almost 25, where I can take young preachers and tell them, say, this is what God said. Now if you can prove me wrong and use scripture I'll listen to you. But just because granny and mama and daddy and papa said this and nothing happened in their life, I'm telling you, greater is he that is in you than he is in your papa. 
And God has blessed me. He's given me one of the most vibrant churches in South Central. I love preaching to y'all. Because I'm telling you what God's speaking into my heart. There's something special getting ready, not just to flicker in this house, but burn in this house. I'm telling y'all, hang on. Hang on. I just don't want a little children to be a little old here and a little fire youth group. <laughs> I want to see the fire. I want to see the fire. I need, watch this, I need daily oil. <laughs> If all I was eating was one day a week like some of you are. A daily touch from the Lord. And listen to this. I noticed this too also in the temple. The temple was set up very uniquely. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies. Y'all hang with me just for a minute. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies. So some of you, you say, man, I just don't feel God. That's on the outside. God says, if I can get you to the inner court into my presence, and the oil gets upon your life, you'll go to the Holy of Holies. And then the Holy of Holies will work through the inside. Because what goes in must come out. My granny was right. My granny was right. And I'm telling y'all, listen to me. Outer here, inner here, Holy of Holies there. It, it'll come out of you. God said, I want you to start on the outer courts. I want you to get touched by God and go to the inner courts. And then the Holy of Holies will come through you. Joel chapter 2, look at I love this. It says, to weep for him between the porch and the altar. I love this. A lot of people miss this. Weep for them between the porch and the altar. The porch on the, is on the outside of the house. The altar should be on the end. You want your house to change? Change the altar. Pray at the altar. Because I'm telling you, if your altar gets it right, everything on the outside will line up for God's glory. Somebody give him praise. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. John the Baptist says it like this in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. I'm flying, but I've got to go somewhere. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. He says, listen to me, we, we, we run over this verse, and Pentecostals have done gone crazy with it, but it's okay because this is true what I'm getting ready to tell you. Listen to me. Let me, let me, let me clarify this. Because there's, a, there's myths going around saying, well, if you don't speak in tongues, you, you won't go to heaven. That, that's a lie from the pits of hell. And I'm going to get some hell this week for saying this stuff, but I'm going to speak truth to y'all. Tongues has nothing at all to do with what Jesus Christ did for you on that cross. It's all about Jesus. It's always going to be about Jesus. And it's going to stay like Jesus. Now, if he wants to give you a gift, accept it in Jesus Christ's name. Open it up and share it. It's just a gift. I shouldn't say it like God just corrected me. It's not just a gift. It's a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift. John the Baptist, I love this. He looks up and he sees a man coming over the hill. And he says, behold, the Lamb of God. They recognized him. And John says, I'm not even worthy enough to unlace his sandals. But Jesus said, I want you to baptize me. And John says these words. I love this. And in Luke chapter 3 verse 16, he says, I baptize you with water. But the one that precedes me is more powerful than I. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. That's what the Bible says, y'all. Can we have a good Bible study today? That's what the Bible says. John says, I'll baptize you with water. But there's one greater than me that's stronger than me. Hallelujah. That's going to baptize you with Holy Ghost, comma, and fire. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you may feel like you've lost the fire. Let's go there. You've lost your zeal. Lost your first love. And I want you to, I want to speak this over you because we got to hear this word. I'm passionate about this because I'm tired of Christians walking around defeated. We've got enough power in this room today to move South Camelsville. We've got enough anointing in this room, all of heaven, to make the coronavirus pack its bag and go straight back to hell. we got that much power. I got enough power and strength in me through the oil to lay hands upon a sick and they shall recover. 
So, so Christians, y'all the hardest people to preach to in my life. You go over to Africa and you go over to Kenya and you go, uh, you go to Haiti and you go, man, they're hungry. You know the hardest people to preach to? Is the ones that said a prayer, but there's never been a transformation in their life. I hear it all the time. I said that prayer, but there's never been no fruit. There's never been no evidence. You mean to tell me that the Holy Ghost, you serve a God who stepped down on nothing and said, huh, let there be light, and the whole world lit up? And you're sitting and saying you're going to have the oil in you and you don't have to change? Listen, some of you may be here today. And you feel cold. You feel like you're in a dark place. You feel like you've lost your first love. You have no fire. You have no zeal. But I'm telling you what God spoke to me. He said, you tell them. You tell them to bring me their nasty, dirty, worn out, filthy rags. And I'll soak. Watch what he said. I'll soak them in my presence. And I'll relight them once again. He wants to relight you. Look, if you're breathing, there's hope for you. When God's done with you, you're dead. If this is my last sermon, watch this. Y'all listen to me. Don't say, well, Lord, we, we want to bring him back. No, Pharaoh, let, let God's children go. Whew. I just want y'all to get this. I just want y'all to get this. God, listen to me. I can't get out of this. God wants to relight somebody here today. God wants to relight you once again. I remember when I got saved and born again. I was seven years old. I didn't have a clue. I just felt something. And so Brother Omer Farmer walked it out. His fingers, his fingers looked like it was that long. Boy. <laughs> he's a big old, he was a, he was a preaching man. He's with the Lord today. And, um. I gave my heart to Jesus Christ that night. It was a Sunday night. I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. And uh, I went home, Courtney. And I got the phone book. And I was, we had one of them old, I don't know phones like it. If you're over 40, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Logan, you don't know. You're like a push button stuff, you know. It's one of them, it takes forever. Y'all remember dial, dial up? Y'all remember that? That was crazy. Anyway, where's this stuff coming from? I was so excited because I felt something. I didn't understand the, the, the Trinity. I didn't understand how Peter walked on water. I didn't understand all that tongue stuff. I still don't understand it, I'll be honest with you. But I dialed people and this woman answered. I remember her. And she said, hello. And I was like, um, I know you don't know me. Um, but I got saved tonight. And bless her heart. She didn't, she didn't know nothing. She didn't know I was Brian Rafferty. But oh boy, I can't wait to talk to her again. I'm going to say, I was the one that called you at Sunday night and told you something happened to me at church, Hills Chapel Baptist Church, and my life changed forevermore. And God blessed me. God, so listen to me. And she, and she said these words, well, honey, that's so good. That's so good, honey. She ministered to me. And she said, now go get them. I didn't know what she meant. I didn't know what she meant. Go get them. Go get who? Now God's given me a platform. Are you kidding me? I get one chance to give my Father in heaven praise, honor, and glory. I don't have time to goof off. I don't have time to play around. I don't have time to half clap for him. I got to burn. I need some oil. I need the fire of God in me like never before. We need the fire in this world. That's what we need. I don't care what y'all say. That, that's what we need. That's what we, some of y'all are flickering. <laughs> some of y'all turn around and say, you little flicker. Yeah, you're flickering. You're flickering. You're flickering. I Watch, I can see. Y'all are to see what I see. Some of y'all are flicker. Some of y'all, Katie, Katie Perry, you're hot one day. You're cold the next. You're a flicker. You're a flicker. O'Brien, 
How? How do I stay on fire? I'm so glad y'all asked. Y'all ready for this? This is so good. I want to tell y'all, how do you not quit in the dip? How do you stay on fire every single day of your life? How do you do it? Y'all ready? Because this is exactly what the high priest Aaron had to do every single day. And listen, Sarah, we can take this to heart or we can sit there and go, that was Old Testament. I hear stuff like that. Don't y'all think that the Old Testament is the schoolmaster to the New Testament? Don't y'all think that the Old Testament means something? It's still got value here today? Well, I'm not under law. We'll do 75 down this highway and you'll find it really good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So how do you not quit in the dip? How do you stay on fire every single day of your life? I got an answer for y'all. It's what this, believe us or not. It's found in the Bible. How do you stay on fire? How are you not like a spiritual yo-yo? Church one Sunday, pandemic comes out for a year. (laughs) Well, Brian, they got fear. God did not give you fear. God gave you love, power, and a sound mind. Y'all know the problem with the church? We're believing the radio stations and more than we are the Word of God. We've got to stand back up as Elkhorn Baptist Church and say, Thus saith the Lord. God, I feel the oil. I need your fire today. How do you stay on fire every day when the world's dwindling? Y'all ready? Here we go. Y'all ready? This is good. Number one. Ooh, how do you not quit in the dip? How do you not quit in the dip? I get excited. I love this right here. You know why? It helps people. Somebody here today, you're in the dip. You've lost your fire. You're not on fire like you once was. You're going through the motions. How do you not quit in the dip? Number one, every day, watch this, every day. Matter of fact, we get this wrong because the Jewish calendar was from six at night to six at night. So at evening, at evening time, their day began. And they would work, 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 work. But at 6 o'clock that night, 12 hours, if the horse was out in the field, the horse stayed in the field. They come back to the house. They honor God. They honor God. Then we done twist around. Well, the ox was in the ditch. There's a, <laughs> number one, here's what Aaron had to do every day to keep the fire burning in the temple. Where's the temple? Y'all look, here, here. Who's the all? The Holy Spirit. Who sends the fire? God. (laughs) Watch. Number one, he had to rekindle the fire. Watch. He just couldn't light it and walk away and say, ah, when it goes out, it goes out. No, 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 no. He had to rekindle the fire. Y'all watch me. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you, preacher. Are y'all getting this today? Here it is. Rekindle the fire means this. Revive. Huh. Stare up. Or relight. <laughs> Even the Bible says, stare up that gift. Stare up that gift. Don't let that, don't let that fire go out, Elkhorn. Come on, y'all. Rekindle the fire. You got to revive it. You got to stare it up. You got to relight it. Number two, you got to refill your lamp. He said, bring me pure oil. Oh, this is so good. Oil that a man didn't touch. He said, go get the horn, put the oil in the flask, and pour the oil from the flask into the lamp. He said, watch, here it is. Look, he said these words, refill your lamp. Refill your lamp. In other words, restock. Huh. I've seen some of y'all at Kroger's. And they didn't have all the, the aisles stocked up yet. Y'all watch. Somebody's watching you at all times. Where's the food at? Where's the food at? Y'all be nice to them precious people. They trying to stock the chefs to feed you. Look, it says this. Refill your lamp. It means restock, reload, or resupply. I'm going to ask y'all a question. Have you reloaded today? 
Well, Brian, Mondays are always <laughs> tough for me. I'm giving y'all some keys right now. I'm giving you got you got to watch this, man. I'm telling y'all, you got to refill your lamp. Refill your lamp. Restock it. Reload it. Resupply. And the third thing, we don't like this one, but this was what Aaron had to do every single day. Every single day. Not just on Sundays. Guys, we got to get this out of our heads. Acts chapter 2 says they met daily, 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 daily. Who did they meet with? God. You got to have a time in your life set aside that you meet God every single day. The third thing that they done was crazy. They trimmed the wick. Oh, man. They had to, listen. They had to remove the dirty, nasty, Stuff off the wick so it will relight. That'll preach. Every day he had to go in and cut away the bad stuff in the life. Y- y'all get me? Every day. Watch. Some of you are holding unforgiveness. You need to trim the wick. Some of you, you've got unforgiveness, you've got guilt, you've got past sin in your life. You need to trim the wick and start burning fresh for God today. Start burning fresh for God today. So last question, I want you to be honest. I'm done. Last question, I want you to be, you got to be honest with yourself. I'm wrapping this up. And you got to be honest with the Lord, watch this, the Lord knows you. <laughs> Lord, he knows who's on speed dial on your phone. He, he knows how many hairs up on your head. He knows everything about you. Watch this. Which one of these lamps represents you? There was a lamp in there that he said that there was a wick. And he would light it. He would light it. You know what God just spoke to me? It's crazy how God speaks, but I hear him. The more wick that you giveth, the brighter the the flame will go. But I'm just asking you all this morning, are you on fire? Does this lamp, lamp represent you? You got the oil. The lamp is you. The oil is the Holy Spirit. And now there's a fire in your life. Is that you? Come on, y'all got to be honest. Don't answer out loud, but you answer your, talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. The second lamp is right over here. It's got oil. They're saved. <laughs> they got the Holy Spirit in them, but there's no fire in their life. That is not what the Bible says. Oh, yeah, you can be a Christian. I, I hear this all the time, but you never see nothing in their lives. Nothing, no fruit. No evidence. But boy, they'll tell you, I said the prayer. Are you this lamp? Are you on fire this morning? Are you this lamp? You've got the oil in you. You're saved. You're really going to heaven. But man, you're not on fire. Or are you this third lamp? You don't have a drop of oil in you. You're here. In your mind, you're sitting there going, ah, here's how Christians are. I love, here's how they go. Now, Brian, I'm not really on fire. And I'm not really cold either. Well, you're lukewarm. Now, Brian, I, I believe in Jesus. I believe all the Bible. But all that gifts and tongues and prophecy and all that crazy, wild stuff, it's just not there no more. And, and, and I may be talking to somebody today, you got a past and you got divorced in your life and you've got hurt in your life and you got a father that walked out of your life and here you today, I'm telling you today, God wants to restart you. God wants to relight you. You're, watch, whether you agree with me or not, you're one of these three. No matter where, I don't care if you've been in church 50 years. 
you're one, either you're on fire <laughs> or you're cold as ice. <laughs> Here you are. You're empty. No fire, no oil. Now, can I back this up with Scripture? Praise team, you guys come. Y'all got this? I'm, I'm finished. Here it is. Which one of them lamps? Be honest. Brandon, which one are you? You say, Brian, you calling people? Yeah, Allison, which one are you? Mike, which one are you? I got that section now. Let's go this one. Jenna, which one are you? Stephen, which one are you? Who's in the back? Somebody mentioned somebody's name who's sitting beside you. Come on, hot, you big chicken. Who's sitting beside you? Brandon? It's good right there. Brandon! I can't see you. Brandon! Which one are you? Because either you're on fire, you've got God, you're lit. <laughs> Different kind of lit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, I've got to stay focused, y'all. <laughs> ADHD. <laughs> it's funny, y'all. Now <laughs> it's funny. Here you are, here you are, or here. You know what would be sad when you get to heaven and you really think it was this one? Brian, God, I was a lamp. The worst, the hardest words in the Bible was depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Brandon, which one are you? Courtney, which one are you? Joy Hicks, I know you're associate pastor, but that don't impress nobody but you. Oh, see, y'all, listen. It's okay. Look at me. It's okay. I promise you, if you will settle it here, <laughs> and don't wait till you get there, there will be only one lamp that's going to shine. And that's this one right here. It's going to burn. You're going to burn. You're going to be, you're going to fire for God. Y'all wouldn't believe the Christian would come to me and say, Brian, you're just too happy, too excited. Oh, are you kidding me? I ain't going to hell. And you want me to act like it? Are y'all kidding me? I got oil in me. He set me on fire. I want to burn. Praise him. What about y'all? Bill Wilson, which one are you, man? Great, which one are you? Brian Rafferty. See, I'm getting involved too. Because right, I ain't going to call y'all out because I've already been called out this week. Now I want y'all to answer. Hey, just answer. Destiny Lee Shane Rafferty? DD? Which one are you? Bobby Walker? I know everybody, they, they got you here. But you're going to have to answer. That's my father-in-law. So I'm going to read this over you. And then you have to answer. Y'all ready? Don't look. It's okay. Pick your lip up. It's okay. Because you're still breathing or still hoping here today. Matthew chapter 25. Listen to this. This is so powerful. So powerful. Y'all want to see how powerful the Word of God is? Watch this. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like in ten virgins. Who took their lamps. Oh my God. And they went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise. Five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish. This is foolish right here. Listen to this. They took their lamps. And took no oil with them. I didn't make this up. This is in your book. But the wise took oil. Hallelujah. Oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, boy, it really spoke to me right there. I wish I had 15 more minutes. I could go 
The bridegroom was delayed. Why was the bridegroom delayed? He gave, I feel the Holy Ghost. He gave the foolish people time to get oil in their lamps. Listen. I can't even read this. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Let's go out and meet him. Then all those virgins, they rose. They trimmed. They got that dirty stuff. They trimmed back all that nasty, dirty, filthy rag out of their life. And the foolish said to the wise, Here's what, the foolish, the foolish, the foolish, the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Give us some of your oil. <laughs> Our lamps are going out. So sad. But the wise answer said, no, lest there should be not enough for us and you. But that's why salvation is personal. You can't go to heaven because your pastor's going to heaven. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You can't have my all. You can't have my all. He said, while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, 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 came. And those who were ready went with him to the wedding. Hallelujah. And the door was shut. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins also came and they said, Lord, 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 please open to us. Open up the door. But he answered and said, surely I say to you, I do not know you. No oil. You tried, you looked good, you had a lamp, but you had no oil in your lamp. And when that horn sounds, y'all watch me. When that horn sounds, your decision, your chapter in your book, your last day man's been said, it's over, it's done, the door's been shut. Last verse, he said, watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Could be today. Yeah. Could be today. Let me ask y'all, which one of these lamps are you? I'm done. Is this you? Is this you? Are you on fire? You got the toy. I'm telling you, when somebody looks at your life, they don't hear dirty jokes on Monday and try to raise your hands on Sunday. There's a lamp. There's a fire in your life. Yeah. Come on now. What you do on the weekend, do you do it on Sunday? Ryan, you ain't none of your bit. All it is today. I just don't want nobody dying to go to hell. I don't want nobody in this room right now. In Jesus Christ's name, I don't know if you're saved. I don't know if you're lost. I, here's how you do it, though. Here's how you, here's how you do it. Are you on fire? Are you cold? You got oil, but there's no fire. Are you empty this morning? Dr. Billy Graham says 75% of people is like this. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done exactly what you told me to do. I pray, dear God, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now. God, if someone is in this room that does not know you, Lord, save them today. God, I pray that, Lord, that lamp, <laughs> that old dirty rag, would be soaked into your presence right now. Right now, God, soak into the presence. And God, you would take that old dirty rag full of unrighteousness and God set them on fire for you. So Lord, right now, save somebody. Save somebody in this room, dear God. Save them in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people say it.